balance. Okay, so much of life is about balance, right? But what about uh, the balance because of the design of your car and the layout, the 50-50 weight distribution, which is ideal. 50% of the weight in the front of your car, 50% on the back. That's the subject of this video. It's not oversteer, understeer. It's another subject of suspension balancing on another video I did. So search the channel for that. But this is about the weight distribution of your car and the balance and the effect that has on handling alone, irregardless, that's not a word, regardless of suspension settings. Well, right away, let me tell you, this video is gonna tell you why Tesla cars are so amazing. Because of their 50-50 perfect weight distribution. Now that's something that, that um, remember, we're not talking about suspension tuning and balance. We're talking about the actual balance of the actual mass in the car. Electric cars, if you don't know, have the most optimal potential design, all right? When I say potential, I mean like my Tesla, my feet down here are right above batteries. The batteries are between this tire that tire and the two tires in the back, okay? They are, the batteries, this whole floor area is batteries in between those four tires and it's all the weight of the car. Now you've got motors too in the front axle and the rear axle, which are also centered on the car, but the, most of the mass is in the batteries. It's like, a, I think it's a, at least 1,000 to 1,500 pounds of batteries in the average Tesla, depending upon your battery pack size. And that battery is way down low too. So, um, Center of gravity is another thing, but we're talking about just weight balance of 50-50. So if you design a car with motors, front and rear axle, and battery pack centered between the wheels, that is the optimal 50-50 weight distribution. Now you can't really obtain, attain that in a internal combustion engine car because you've got like an internal combustion engine car up here, this heavy, heavy weight of an engine, right? And usually transmission or transaxle right up front. And then in the back, you don't have much. So that is an incredibly unbalanced design inherent in internal combustion engine cars. So anytime you have a platform of a car that's designed to accept an internal combustion engine or uh, has one, because even if it's designed to accept it, it's got compromises, it's got some severe, severe weight balance compromises. Just know that. So that's been the challenge with vehicles all along is to try to perfect that. And like, like Porsche, for instance, has uh, tried to perfect that with either their mid-engine boxer design, which is actually the best internal combustion engine design is mid-engine, or their original rear drive 911 uh, car design with the engine in the back, but even that has problems because all the weight's in the back, not just in the front, but in the back, and yeah, it's over the rear axle, but sometimes it overhangs the rear axle like the DeLor DeLorean model was at. It overhung it in the back. It was just a reverse of a front engine design that drove the back wheels. And sometimes Porsche with the 944s has put the engine in the front and a long tunnel under here with the uh, driving the rear wheels, but and put the transmission over the rear wheels, which is even more complicated and prone to breaking down. But it helped with the, the weight balance. But let me just tell you straight up front, uh, you know, all wheel drive is best, I think, for traction and for even balance because it has a lot of drive components all over the place, not just on one axle. But mid-engine design is the best. Mid-engine is like where the engine's right in the middle of the car in between the wheel the four wheels like this battery pack is in between the four wheels well the engines here what does that mean the engines big right that means you can only have two seats so it's inherently spaced inefficient even though it's ideal like if you ever driven a Toyota MR2 as a mid-engine car most all Ferraris are mid-engine cars like I said the Porsche Boxster there's other examples they're they are low production number premium sports cars sometimes incredibly expensive okay so that's the problem with the mid-engine yeah it's great for track handling and everything but um it actually sometimes it's more like a, all the weights in the actual mid mid center of the car <laughs> and there's other problems because of that but with the spread out design of the weight on the electric design of the tesla you have true optimal balance of weight distribution that's where you get the benefits so let me know if you've experienced this in other cars what cars you've liked and thought you've had really good balance, weight balance, weight distribution, and what you think of had horrendous weight distribution, which is your average car. But as long as you're keeping the speeds down, not throwing it in the corners, you don't notice it so much. Once you start throwing it in the corners, not only does the weight distribution and uh, balance aspect come into, into play, but also the suspension balance, which is another video. So anyway, all this to say that Tesla, one of the reasons why Tesla people love Tesla so much is because they have such amazing, amazing balanced weight distribution 
because of their design. You know, they cannot hold an internal combustion engine. You, you may see like some manufacturers like Toyota just announced they're coming out with a new platform, an EV platform, but it's also going to potentially be a hybrid and potentially have an internal combustion engine on it, which means it's compromised. It's not going to have the same feel. The sports car feel, like this SUV has like a sports car feel because of the 50-50 uh, weight distribution all around the vehicle, front and rear, and side to side, everything. So that's it. That's why Teslas feel so great. Tesla only makes cars like that. There may be other manufacturers at some point in the future, but most manufacturers who have built electric cars to this point do not use this type of a design that Tesla uses, and that's why they're inherently flawed, they're inherently compromised, and they don't drive as well, and they never will. So let me know your thoughts on this. Please be sure to comment. I love to read your comments. Like, share, subscribe, hit the thumbs up and the bell for notifications, and we'll see you in the next video.